Today we're going to do a poor man's foldback. That's adding foldback to the one foot drawbar on the top manual. On Hammond spinets, they didn't put foldback on any of the top drawbars, and the one foot is the easiest remedy, so we're going to do that today. This job requires a little bit of prep work. As you can see in a previous project, I removed the lid. Some gentle to not so gentle whacking with a rubber mallet on the underside will get that out. Sometimes it chips the veneer, but this is going to be refinished anyway, so just a little sanding gets it in place. Sand down these joints here so they're, uh, they, they don't fit quite so snugly, but they're still there for support. And I've also added uh, cabinet locks in two places so the lid snaps on and it can pull off for ease of use. Then for the fold back, this is the back cover for the manuals where the uh, key contacts are. It opens up the back of the loom so we can access the wires connected to the contacts and the terminal strip. It's got a set of screws up top and a set of screws on the bottom. You remove both of those and then I've got the manual lifted up and held up by some wood blocks that are just wedged under there. Here's how the fold back is possible. We have here our terminal strip and just below there you see a bunch of white wires. Those are very tiny wires that are connected to the key contacts and the terminal strip. Each key has a set of contacts that go to the terminal strip. The terminal strip goes to the tone generator and that's how we get our tones. At the end here we have one single wire. It's a ground wire. The Hammond percussion circuit leeches off of a drawbar. They always did this with the one foot drawbar. So the one foot drawbar goes all across. There are key contacts for every key on it because it uses the percussion. For some reason, instead of folding it back, they just grounded them out so that there's no tone, but they're still there and still in the circuit for when you activate the percussion. So all we're gonna do is take those wires off of the ground, figure out which key they correspond to, and tack those on to the correct terminal. Well, <clears throat> I was gonna be really clean about this and desolder them, but they look like they're wrapped around there, so I'm just gonna snip them. Don't tell anybody. So if I had a multimeter, what I would do is attach one clip to a drawbar, another clip to a wire, and find out which key it goes to, and then we'd solder it in place from there. I don't have a multimeter and I'm not patient. So what we're going to do is put a wire to a terminal and start playing notes until we find out what note that wire corresponds to. All right, so with the one foot draw part pulled out, I'm just gonna grab this first wire here, stick it on a terminal. It doesn't really matter which one, we're not going for notes, we're going for which key it corresponds to. And we're gonna go down the line until we find one that produces some sound. There we go. That one is E. I have a chart that I've gotten from Bob Mann, who does a lot of Hammond restorations. And he's got a nice little chart that tells you which note corresponds to which lug on the terminal strip. I will post that in the comments so that you can use it for reference. But that's what we're gonna be going off of, and I'm gonna go ahead and attach that contact now. All right, that took longer than I'd like to admit, but it is on there. The E works. I found the best method is to kind of hook the wire a little bit, put it around the wires that are already connected behind it, get a pair of needle nose pliers and pull it up around the terminal and twist them over. Uh, that way it's in the exact same position as the rest of the contact wires. It's wrapped around the terminal, it's got good contact. 
but they're tiny wires it takes a bit of patience so let's get going on the rest of them we're just going to do the exact same method for all of them the first six lugs I believe only have one wire connected to them and the next ones will have two that's part of the fold back so let's get to that okay we have the six tones uh, soldered into place now those are each of the terminal strips the first six are each of the terminal strips that only have one wire on each lug now we're moving on to the to the lugs that have octaves repeated so I found the C notes what I've done is wrapped both the wires around each other so that I only have to solder once and it's going to be a little easier to handle and since they're both the same note uh, it's okay to do that so we're going to do that for the rest of the tones alright we have all the wires soldered into place on the correct terminals I even took off the ground wire there so it looks somewhat tidy so let's close her up and see how it sounds alright let's test out the one foot and make sure all the tones are there and the fullback is correct Sounds good. Now I've got some audio samples of the before and afters. The first two are with the first three and the last drawbar pulled out, slow then fast. And the second two are all drawbars pulled all the way out, slow then fast. amazed at what a huge difference this mod makes. It's not very time consuming, but it is very tedious, uh, though it is well worth your effort. Uh, so next time I'm awaiting some caps to come in the mail, and we'll be rebuilding the vibrato box. Thanks for watching.